Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me. You can find the Mocha Minutes podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, TuneIn, CastBox, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Find us on any of those platforms or wherever else you catch a podcast. Also still soliciting for ratings and reviews. If you would be so inclined, please leave us some five stars. Leave us some reviews. Would greatly appreciate it. Also, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Mocha Minutes on all three of those platforms. If you want to shoot me an email, give me some feedback. Other than on those three places, you can email me at mocha minutes at gmail.com. Hello and welcome back to the Mocha Minutes podcast. This is Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, It's been a heavy few weeks. I had to step away um, as I took a couple of weeks to just decompress and not um, just take some, take a step back because I'm mourning the death of my grandmother. Uh, So thank you to everyone for their very sweet messages. Everybody who reached out to me. Um, It was good to take a step away because I feel like if I didn't, it wouldn't have been good. So I'm glad I had to step. I'm glad I took a time, took time to step away. I'm glad I took time to um, spend with my family. Uh, Christmas is over. Um, It was an interesting Christmas, but still a good Christmas nonetheless. And we are rounding out the year (laughs) by talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion. And with me today, very excited, she hopped, hopped, hopped right on over to the Mocha Mendes podcast from She's Starting. I have Lily. Lily, how are you? I am so good. And I'm so glad that you took that time to take care of yourself and reflect on what you need. And self-care is so important, especially around the holidays, especially around um, monumentous loss, Mm -hmm. which has touched all of us in some way more some more than others this year and um i'm really happy to be your foray back into podcasting and to also end this year with you i don't know when we'll air but i know that we're we're recording be right just before the end of the year so Mm. i am honored to be here um (laughs) um stephanie and i have been through it in terms of potomac in terms of the followers in terms of the blockers in terms of our friends Mm. um we are sick and tired of being sick and tired (laughs) i was like i'm not talking about this anymore i'm like i'm not Mm -hmm. trying to end friendships over a reality show i'm not trying to Uh -uh. and like whether internet friends in-person friendships like just id friends however you want to say it I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to not, I'm not going back and forth with you. And I definitely wasn't doing yeah. it in the last couple of weeks. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have the, I don't have the mental space. I don't have <laughs> the mental scope to do this with you. Um, I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So I kind of yeah. literally, I didn't talk about it, but I watched others and I found new voices because I think for us, I was, mm-hmm. we, we kept looking at this and going, okay, so are we the crazy ones? Or do y'all not see what we see? I feel like we were the little boy going, the emperor has no clothes. What are y'all doing? Right. I, I mean, I, there's still people that are very close to us Mm -hmm. that are like unwavering Monique fans. And like, I feel like there's this internal truce and Mm -hmm. I just, I just laugh at them because (laughs) 
like, I'm not going to name any names, but I know that some of our friends are like, I, at this point, I just like riling y'all up. And I'm just like, like, look, I just like, I choose violence. <laughs> I just like, like, I choose violence. That's what they do. Like, oh, like I know, well, like, I'm coming, you're like, I choose violence. I'm like, what? I don't think that the, like, uh, the people like in our little space that are like our friends actually actively choose violence i think that they just really love monique and can yeah. look over what she's done they like and... the villain i'm like that's fine that's really fine i'm like i respect them more going like it doesn't matter i'm team monique right. i'm 10 toes down and i'm like okay <laughs> um and i mean i think that the friends that like are like admitting like we're just trying to rile you up like we mm -hmm. we know that um we know we differ in opinion and there's um then there's people who are just like, so I think it's interesting because I, I did not stay away from the internet mm. at any point during all of this. And mm -hmm. I might have, I might regret that, but I mean, <laughs> as, as you know, there's been some scuffles, um, verbal scuffles. Has. Some people have been blocked. Some people have been muted. Some like some <laughs> YouTubes have been unsubscribed from, I'm like, yeah, I'm good yeah. on this. And it's kind of like, you got to put up a boundary. I'm like, I'm not going to do this with you. Cause I think what happened, I think it was yesterday on Teria's um, IG post. Uh, somebody like, <laughs> somebody wrote something like really nasty about Candace. Well, not really nasty. They're talking about like homophobia versus transphobia and um, misogyny. Because oh, I saw put, that. Yeah, she mm -hmm. put up that post about what Chris Samuels and was like, I remember seeing that clip. I didn't, it's like, it was jarring the second time I saw it. I was like, wait a minute. Wait, it was also tripled down say? on. Yeah, it was also tripled down on when they showed it again last night. Yeah. Where he, you saw a little more of the clip and he was like, um, I wish I wasn't, okay, I'm, I'm not, this isn't verbatim. It was something like, I wish I wasn't a man. So he says Bruce he said, Jenner. I wish I was Bruce Jenner. And right. I went, so all of Caitlin? us. Caitlin? <laughs> so yeah so there was a tr on that thread of Teria's yesterday we were talking about maybe he means Bruce Banner who's the Hulk and um I was like that's actually what I thought mm -hmm. because Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk and like he smashes people so mm -hmm. I was like maybe that's what he meant um because Bruce Jenner doesn't exist anymore um and he uh Bruce Jenner is C Caitlyn Jenner so I was like giving him a little more benefit of the doubt that he didn't dead name her. Mm -hmm. And then um, because we I saw- stomp y'all out. And I went, right. So that where was I like, when he said this? I was like- he. That's like when, that's like where I was like, maybe he means the Hulk because that's what the Hulk would do, right? So right. maybe he meant Bruce Banner. But then we saw the clip, a little more of the clip at the reunion last night. And he was like, he said something to the effect, like, I wish I wasn't a man. Right. And so I, I wish I could be really... just like Caitlyn. I'm like, so you want to identify as a woman so you could beat other women up. So that's really what like made me actually change my mind that he was referring to Bruce Jenner because mm. he wants to tra be trans for a moment so he could justify right, kicking women. women's ass. But then he also dead named her. So I was just like, get yes. out of well, here. I'm sitting here like... <laughs> So yeah, I, I, and the bad part about it is Monique just sat there and she was like, and he would do it because he used to do it for a living. I'm like, so you're okay with your husband being like this. So when he start, when he apologized, he's like, I'm ashamed of my actions, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, you do realize this came out months ago. Why, Why was it not brought up by anyone that he referred to Bruce Jenner as somebody uh, dead named her, dead right. named Caitlyn? I was sitting here like, like Wait really? Minute. That's no one bringing was like up Candace's ten-year-old tweets, but nobody not saying what Bru what Bruce, what Chris <laughs> Samuel said in what August? Right. It's like um, I'm if it was if it was talked about I know the show was 11 hours long and we saw three and a half hours of it so maybe it came up it and they didn't it wasn't like just I don't, just, don't, just don't see it I, and I honestly I'm trying to think I think we have had a secrets revealed for Potomac a few times I don't know if oh. they're doing one I don't know if we ha I feel like they've done maybe one but maybe they just haven't I don't remember 
I don't remember either. If I would love to see the rest of that reunion, I would spend eleven hours just watching them. Like, I'm like, just eat. let it, just give us the. I would watch them eat lunch. Yeah, I would YouTube. watch them we'll watch do it. whatever they do in that eleven hours. I would watch every freaking second of it. <laughs> right, right. Despite me just saying I'm fucking tired of all of this, I was like, I'm still watching for eleven. See, this is how. <laughs> This is how hilarious this is for us. So we <laughs> are talking about the three and a half hour Real Housewives of Potomac fifth season reunion. Mm-hmm. So I remember last year's Dallas reunion, or was it earlier this year? I'm not even exactly sure. because I is think it was this year. Was it earlier this year? I, could, I don't even remember because I'm sitting here like time is a social construct. I I don't know what year this time it's a social construct this year for sure did, like, did, did you know. know the jersey one was also this year like somebody pointed that out to me and i was like it was you're going to jail for pointing this out to me what it? For re- <laughs> yes what oh wow this is this is crazy i'm like okay so i'm not I'm not ready for this. This sucks. It's like, this sucks, man. Like, what the hell? Both of these are this year. What? I'm like, so when Dallas had their one, they had their two and a half hour reunion. Cause I was mm-hmm. like, wait a minute. Why is one hour and then an hour and a half? I'm like, wait a minute. What? It, what's this extra half an hour for? And that's, you know, I loved, I have to say, this is probably the first reunion where you got something out of all three parts. There wasn't a filler part of the reunion. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the seasons, a lot of the shows have, like, if they have multiple parts, there's one part that is like, yeah, so y'all could have cut all of this out. Y'all didn't have to show us this. I, mm-hmm. What are we doing? Most notably, Beverly Hills, New York, and Orange County. They are famous for those filler episodes. Like, girl, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. Jersey sometimes, but it depends on what they're talking about. I was like, but I, as far as I'm concerned, Jersey and Dallas happened in like a lifetime in which I, I can't believe it's become a I'm different like, person. Like, I can't either, but um, hmm. somebody like put up a few months ago so that I don't even know if that timeline's true. <laughs> At some point recently, um, they put a picture of the reunion where like Danielle was like bitching about need not sitting next to Andy. Um, And they're like, we just want to remind you that this was earlier this year. And I was just like, put your shit away. Leave us alone. Go to your room. It's like, you are grounded. (laughs) Turn, change the, change the code to the Wi-Fi. You don't deserve the internet anymore. You (laughs) have to sit over there and (laughs) you get out here, get out my face. (laughs) It's like, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Yeah. This was March. down and eat your dinner. You're wrong. Jersey reunion was in March. Yeah, so I. Girl. I mean, March so of twenty eighteen. I don't know. The, <laughs> the the um the break in the year in March for everybody. Like February was a different year for everybody. Mm-hmm. I feel like there was this mini miniature year between twenty nineteen and March of twenty twenty. It's been. It's been like the longest five years and one year that I've ever had. I'm like, this is a lot. I cannot believe this. Jersey really was in March. This is nuts. Oh my God. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry to deliver this information. I, I feel like ugh, I've been, <laughs> I feel gooped right now. I'm like, wait a minute. What? Gooped? You feel duped? I feel gooped. See, this oh, is what happens. Oh, like, RuPaul's Drag Race is coming back this week. So that's why I'm like, oh, I was gooped. Because I'm like, what oh, the hell? I, I haven't watched Drag Race in a long time. Didn't, I have, I know that I probably am missing a lot. There's so much good TV that, uh, like, I don't, there's people like Kendrick, mm-hmm. he watches everything. And I was like, do you sleep? Right. And uh, he's <laughs> the one who said we should watch House of Ho, that reality show on HBO Max. And I started, I'm like, this is kind of cute. I've fun. heard that's good. It's crazy yeah. rich Asians in Houston, right. Texas. I'm like, oh, it's okay. like real, yeah. <laughs> it's like, so whew. there's right. the there's people like Kendrick who watch who also work from home like I do, but he mm-hmm. can watch TV while he works. And I actually listen to y'all's podcast while I work. See, that's and the I'm, thing. I listen to podcasts when I was in the office, and now when I'm home, it's like mm-hmm. I don't know why it's hard for me to listen to a podcast, but because I'm used to listening while I'm moving and doing mm-hmm. things. Like if I'm in a if I'm going to like a store, I'm like, I pop up my earphones, pop in, pop out, pop in my earphones and listen to a podcast while I'm going. I'm like, 
Yeah, I'm like, who, like, how, what store am I going to? I'm not being a while. Whose podcast can I listen to? Oh, let me listen to Therese. Let me listen to the read. Let me listen. <laughs> it's like, got tons to choose from. I'm like, yeah, but he's sitting at my desk. I don't know. It's like, but podcasts are a good soundtrack yeah. for telework, I have to say. It's like, they I are. have to get in the mood for it. And I'm still behind. Like, I right? am probably a month behind. Oh, I, mean, wow. I, I mean, I'll like pick and choose like more recent because like once you get like three weeks behind, it's like the shit already happened. Mm -hmm. I want I like the jokes and I like the interaction, but I've been choosing stuff that's been like airing in the last week or so mm -hmm. to like listen to. Okay. Like I listened to Kendrick's and I listened mm -hmm. to Taria's with mm -hmm. y'all. Um, mm -hmm. I listened to half of that yesterday. Um, I re-listened to the Know That podcast with Taria because she just succinctly like really mm -hmm. I just just says how what our opinion is about this whole thing um mm -hmm. i think that um she also did a really good job of showing them that maybe monique is not the best um <laughs> then the best team to be behind but they're unwavering yeah. so that's fine but I really liked the conversation because it was super mm -hmm. respectful mm -hmm. despite mm -hmm. the disagreement and mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to listen to it anyway again yeah. so I was like since I'm coming into this conversation with Stephanie I'm gonna um listen to this diplomatic conversation again because it, it was really was. worth I loved it I, yeah. I love diplomacy because that's what happened when Kay and Aaron were on my show from Bravo Wild Black like mm -hmm. they were team Monique or more mm -hmm. team neither to team Monique and it was like our conversation was civil and Kyle was just like see I like talking to civil I like this kind of conversation where we can just go we don't agree I'm mm -hmm. like yeah because after a while it's like okay so what's the point I'm like there's some people like I don't care I don't like Candace that's on period I'm never I'm never going to change and I'm like okay <laughs> it's like I, I I'm not gonna I tell know. you what to do I'm like there's, I'm gonna tell you how I feel and you there's know tons feel. of like, people that don't like her and um the reactions like to her mm -hmm. and um who else is there there's another housewife that I see so it's definitely Candace mm -hmm. oh, oh and Bronwyn um people will use like vomit emojis and I'm just like if your reaction to these housewives is vomiting, like get yourself to a GI specialist because that's not normal. Like you can dislike someone without vomiting. Yeah. Like, like why are you using vomit? Send some screenshots to Karen so she can call your boss because she's good at like, that. So get, just give it to yeah. her. Get you a good enterologist because your relationship with Bravo should not cause vomiting. Yeah. It's so, like, just don't watch it, baby. No one is literally... I was like, there is no, and the bad part about it is for Orange County, there is no FOMO. Nobody's got, oh my God, y'all should be watching this. Yeah. I want to watch it for Bronwyn's journey, but I can binge it way after the season ends way. and not give them viewership. So Absolutely. that's what I'll do. Yeah. I like, am. Yeah, I can wait. There's a lot of Bronwyn's story that um is kind of parallel to mine. Like she quit drinking. Mm. I did not have a, I was not anywhere near in terms of alcoholism um, as she was, but I also quit drinking this year. Mm. And um, even though like I didn't really have like a problem with alcohol, I the shit that that comes up when you remove something like that from your life, even though it's maybe not a huge crutch or right. you're not physically addicted, yeah, um, it's hideous. Yeah, and I can imagine doing that on national TV. I cannot imagine it. Um, it's like the so. wave of emotions. It's huge. Like, mm -mm. I I don't even know how to. Yeah, I got to watch these episodes with Bronwyn. But it's literally y'all y'all call me after the reunion. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> let me know when the reunion because I think they filmed the reunion last week it's, or the week before. They did because we got to Gina, see all those... and I was just like, she looked good. What this is like, y'all? This is not a drill look how good Gina looks. I'm like, she was like, I heard y'all, y'all won. Let me get some cute hair. I'm like, yes, darling, please. And she, she looked cute. Good. She was dressed. She looked beautiful. Her hair was beautiful. Makeup was beautiful. I'm like, <sighs> so it, yeah. it took us ignoring you to actually get your shit together. Oh, okay. Got it. We'll remember <laughs> this 
in the past. In the I future. wonder how much of it's on on Regina's radar that we're ignoring OC. Like, I feel like Kelly's only really the one that um, gets the feedback that like we're boycotting because of you. It's like yeah. um, if she, I mean, she's blocked most of us, but um, I'm. Just, <laughs> she, I love how I mean, he was actually acting like it was because her and Tamara weren't there. I'm like Victoria. Nobody cares. Victor, I love when you call people their their entire birth name it's like when you are upset with them. Like, girl, if you don't leave us all the way alone, shut the hell up. Nobody. Cares. I will. I will say if they had plucked out a Kelly Dodd and put in a Tamara and a Vicky, I would have watched. I would have. I would have done it. It's I don't care for see, like, either of those people, though. Actually, I was like, yeah, and it's like I. Whew. But I still would have watched. I'm about to say. watch Dallas too, and I don't know if they're going to be very boring or not. Exactly. But. I was like, I'm here for Dr. Moon. This is a Dr. Moon stan account. That's what I'm here for. And everybody <laughs> was just like, How is she your favorite? And she ain't even been on the show. I'm like, Look, the who the else past. would be? I'm like, I honestly liked Cameron last season. Ping pong balls out. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> <Like> drawing. <laughs> Was she's she drawing said, the her little drawing oh. killed me i'm like if you don't leave us alone legs up <laughs> ping pong balls go out i'm like wait what, what and she's of- like one of them hit me <laughs> like you got a girl i can't even do this i'm like y'all are in thailand and y'all went to one of these shows and i do it was like See, they still use the, the offensive term that's offensive to a lot of people. Lady Early, boy. They lady use boy, that. yeah. Yeah, so they use it and it's for them it's not offensive. For a lot of other people who are trans and trans adjacent, they're like, yeah, don't ever call me that. It's like I would yeah. never have called it that, either. whether they use it that use it in Thailand or not. Mm-hmm. I think I would have said I'll I'm gonna go to the ping pong show. Right. Because I'm like, I don't even know what the, yeah. I'm like, I don't even remember what the show was called. But yeah, I'll be watching Dialless for Dr. Moon. And also, we are recording this on Monday, December 28th. And mm-hmm. we both got the notification that Deandra Simmons is in the ICU with COVID. Yep. I saw that. I was like, I can't imagine. I don't know if they're done was- filming either. I don't. I think they did rap filming, but I could have swore uh, Homegirl was on Twitter this last weekend. I mean, like, it can. As far as I can tell, it can go pretty fast. Like right. you so can like, feel sick and in the ICU immediately, like the next day. Yeah. It all depends on who you are. So right, because I'm like, oh, um, that's awful. That that's awful. awful. That is just, it's just plain I don't, awful. I don't wish that type, I don't wish that disease or death from that disease on anybody. And that includes our president mm-hmm. when he was sick and people were like, I hope he dies. And I was just like, oh, I did. And I was like, no, no, you need to live at least until November 5th. Well, there's also like, let's finish this story and finish it right with your ass in jail. But it's just mm-hmm. also like wishing the death of from COVID on somebody is, I don't wish that on anybody like dying alone dying like yeah because you're drowning and your lungs are just filled with fluid like this yeah. sounds so awful that i mean i wasn't unhappy that he caught it because um i love a good schadenfreude <laughs> hello hello um i knew he would be fine because he has access to everything that one could need to get better. Um, yeah, and also- I was like, it's because it's he's a rich white man. I'm like, no, because he's the president of the United States. That's what I mean, this is. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's, but rich white men are the president of the United States. Oh, yeah, like, that's true. That's I think true. that if he had caught this as the, uh, if he had caught this in February and he was no longer the president, he would have probably been able to access the same treatment. But it yeah. wouldn't have been free. He wouldn't have had that free ass health care that none of us have. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, mm. I, wish, I wish the best for Deandra and anybody who is in the hospital with this because that's, I, I can't imagine. And I don't wish that kind of, I do not wish this on anyone. This yeah. is, it sounds so frightening. I was like, yeah, I don't want, I was like, I, people are like, yeah, go let him die. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't need him to be a martyr before election that day. Too. And that then too. I was like, yeah, no, I need him to live. And now I'm at this point, like, yeah, he needs to live till January 19th. 
Um, you uh, were talking about on the the, the podcast with Tyria and Damani and Sasha. We were like, um, oh hello, everybody needs to report his Twitter account. But then somebody else was like, I hope that it, he doesn't he doesn't get picked up in a helicopter. But I think someone said like a cop car or a paddy wagon yep. or something. Put him right in the back. Put him like, right in the back. We're we're gonna. <laughs> We're going to take you to your new home, sir. I thought that was really funny. Put him right in the back. I'm good. It's like, uh -uh, Uh, put him right in the back. I am definitely interested to see how his uh, platform plays out. Um, There's been some concern that he could run again in 2024 because his base is so strong. But if he's a felon, I don't think he can run for president. So uh, let's see. Let's see. Fingers crossed he cannot. (laughs) Fingers crossed it. I, I, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball for real, but if I look in my fake crystal ball, the future <laughs> is not bright. The future of it is not bright for him. So you are, <laughs> you know what, Lily? See, am, am, I, am I out of pocket? You are not. That is funny. You know what? Let's talk about Potomac in this reunion, child. This oh yeah, we got season, derailed. Right? That no, happens. it's fine. It was just like, I'm like this re. This season, mm-hmm. with what we saw on camera, um, all of the fandom, all of the behind the scenes, the lives, the tweets, the IG stories, mm-hmm. that has all encompassed on this being one of the darkest seasons of a Real Housewives show mm-hmm. I've seen in a very long time, if it wasn't the... I think when you, I think a friend of mine pointed out that she thought Atlanta, when they were um, giving the rumor that Candy drugged and was going to drug and rape Phaedra, um, she said, I think that one was darker. And I think I see why she thought that because she was just talking about what was on the show and -hmm. at the reunion. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I can see that. I think I'm just including the fandom because, man, it was getting like, if it's not already Lucy, Lucy, apple juicy levels of crazy. It was like, okay, so this is a lot. It was like, uh-huh. w- w- what is going on here? So I was so glad. At first they were talking about it might be four parts. And I'm like, what do they have to talk about for four edited hours? And then uh. you find out it's three parts and the last part is 90 minutes. And I'm like, this is going to be. I, I think I could have watched way more as we already discussed. Right. So. I was like, there's so many conversations that could have gone on longer and some that didn't need to go on longer. But I'm glad to a certain extent, like Bethany says, they hashtag mentioned it all and you need to. There's a lot of stuff that happened on this season. Mm-hmm. So now that you've watched all three parts, mm-hmm. do you feel lighter or do you like, I still have questions? Um, so I have questions like, Mm -hmm. and I think some of them have been answered in other podcasts. So I'm, I'm okay with those answers such as why does Candace get the brunt of Monique's anger when, um, it really should have been Giselle, but then at the same time, there's like, well, Giselle did say it on the show, but Monique didn't know that at the time. And it's really this rumor that's being perpetuated by someone called Gigi. And it doesn't really all add up. Like Candace is being reprimanded by Monique at the beginning of the season for having her, having Sharice at a party, mm-hmm. which I agree she should have given a heads up. Like if she knew there was beef, I agree that's respectful. Mm-hmm. Um but if why is Monique so mad at Candace for inviting Sharice to a party and being friends with her when it's really all about Gigi in the first place? And then, I mean, I might have all this wrong, but like, so it sounds like Sharice is barely involved. She's barely on the, ser- the, the season. Yeah. And then also Monique's got some hand in the pot too, like helping to stir the cauldron. So like, how does why is Candace getting all of this and then um I think Taria said it on the know that podcast she said she thinks that um Monique was working to like get Candace off the show because 
nobody wanted her around mm-hmm. um and that she was happy to like play nice nice with Giselle despite knowing Giselle's involvement because mm-hmm. and I agree with this because more than one person has says it as well like that everybody wants to be good with the green-eyed bandits like they're the it girls of the show so that's a that's a Kendra cap take and I'm like that sounds that's a Kendra take it is it's like that's a hot take and I'm like I don't think points it's are made. Hot. <laughs> points were made. I don't think it's hot at all. I think I think it's I think it's human nature to want to be liked by the popular girls. Mm-hmm. It's like um, I'm just like, ooh, I'm like, and yeah, I can see that. I can see it. And yeah, and I think that if it's not the Green Eyed Bandit, she definitely wanted in with Giselle. Like, there's a self-appointed like I'm the queen bee of this show situation that's going on with Giselle, but people don't disagree with that. They don't, um, it's like they disagree and don't disagree. And they're like, let's get somebody in there that'll dethrone Giselle. And they're like, yep, because can't Moni came in here and got under Giselle's skin. I'm like, so I so I hear y'all, but why are y'all acting like before Moni got there, they had been like, oh, I don't know, six or seven seasons of Potomac. She literally came in season two. <laughs> I was like, what y'all give this, y'all give Giselle way too much credit i'm like make no mistake when it Uh comes to the faces of that franchise it's giselle karen and ashley and it's like as much as i dislike ashley i'm like even i can admit this that girlfriend carries that show because she got a storyline every damn year it's her lousy ass husband it's other stuff it's her shit with her mama her white daddy don't want her i'm like what is going i'm like how is she able to carry this show and start, she starts mess on that show. And because she's so transparent with her life, she is literally the self drag of the show at the same time. Like, <laughs> how, I'm like, you're like, why are you guys saying no bias? Well, literally her life is a self drag. Okay. It's like, I don't. She don't bears it all. Me. And she, she so it's like that makes her a really good housewife. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's the part I'm like, yeah. And I listened to a, um, interview with her recently on Sarah Fraser's podcast and when they were talking uh-huh. it's like I don't Sarah didn't ask her this question but the way that she was talking about what her life is like and she's so happy and I just want to be a mom I'm like I feel like if Ashley is ever off this show it's going to be her choice she's just gonna be like I'm going to walk away just and like- I think that yeah I think she's trying to st- also build that um this is a new term to me. Thanks, Atria. She's trying to build that lily pad. Mm-hmm. Um, so she can hop right the fuck off. Right. That's why she and, didn't get a post up. I'm like, oh, I stopped doing it. I'm like, yeah, see, you want to stop doing you need this. To, you need to do it. And I was like, you really it, do need to do it? I'm like, you like, he showed himself. I don't have to do the post up. I'm like, yeah. So I feel like you still should do that. But if you're like looking at like, I might not be into this long term you'll be like yeah I don't need it but she did say Michael was her person and I'm like I look it's not for me to decide I don't care just keep bringing your self drag storyline <laughs> and keep stirring the mess so everybody think, can just forget yeah. how messy she truly is and I'm like this is why when Eric I'm saying Candace's mouth is so reckless I'm like so this is how I know y'all don't watch this show the way that I watch this show or literally uh-huh. just watch the show period you may have seen a couple episodes from other seasons and like just was invested in this because of the fight because a lot of people uh-huh. came to Potomac this season because of all the stuff that happened after the fight last October there was a lot of uh-huh. tea they're like oh I guess I, I guess I better watch this season because I ain't been watching Potomac since season two and it's like I need y'all to watch all of these seasons I think because, that um ooh. I think I certainly didn't enter this season expecting to defend Candace one minute I will tell you that right now. Same. Because it's like, we um, all heard the same story. She threw a drink on Monique and Monique had to defend herself. And I'm like, oh, I, I actually see this. I had very little information on the fight. Um, I actually just have not appreciated her mouth. And I want to just touch on this a little bit. And, um, beca- and it's because of you guys that I have... I've realized my like relationship with colorism and Mm -hmm. it it also like stems back into like what we were just talking about, like how everybody wants to be good with the green eye bandits or or Giselle Mm -hmm. or the top three are Ashley um, and Giselle and Karen. And Mm -hmm. um, like, I know that there's 
people on the show that are of of lighter complexion than maybe Karen, but mm-hmm. I think that like especially the wanting to be like in with the cool kids and that the cool kids are the the ones with the European features, mm-hmm. like it says a lot. Um, and yeah. I had not until I was forced to this season. Um, I was really I didn't really I be I was. Um, I was an, not an Ashley apologist, but I just mm-hmm. didn't really see that like the shit that she was doing mm-hmm. as as damaging as it was. And when it's been pointed out to me that like maybe that I'm not seeing the Ashley uh, aggression, but I'm seeing the darker women's aggression. Mm-hmm. Like I felt, and I'm catching myself with these words too when I described a- a Wendy's um first um trip to Monique's Mm -hmm. house like I used the word aggressive I've used that word for Candace and I um I I didn't realize that perhaps that like colorism was affecting the way I was seeing the show yeah and it's eye-opening it's uncomfortable Mm -hmm. for me to say this because it's embarrassing but we I know that we're all learning and um yeah so I am thankful that I have all of you mm-hmm. to like explain it to me, do that emotional labor, keep like all of all people who are watching this show who are not a, a black people to like remind them that they have a different lens in which they watch this show. Yeah. And this blend, this is this is the perspective that you might want to consider. And it's to consider like to consider it the way that people of color watch the show, especially black women. Yeah. So the thing about it is, is like, I saw that, saw that early on. And then I saw one of Brooke Ashley's reviews and I'm like, oh, so I'm not the only one who saw this. Cause I'm like, why are you, why are you calling Wendy ferocious? Now, when Robin went to Oz to confront Ashley, she had Giselle with her when she, when after she was explained to her mom and her brother, she said they were aggressive. So she has, so I think for Ashley, she was like, I've used that term for other people, um, but you didn't say it to her face. You said uh-huh. they were aggressive. When Monique threw Giselle out of her house, the first thing Giselle was like, okay, you're being a little aggressive. However, uh-huh. comma, <sighs> Ashley called Wendy ferocious. Robin came to your damn restaurant to beat your ass. And you're not Mm -hmm. calling her ferocious. It's like, but, and that's the thing. They were like, they didn't see it. And I feel like for Monique, she would have understood this conversation with colorism. She would have had a better grasp if she had hit Ashley Darby. You would have saw a very different conversation if she had hit Karen Huger, not only because Karen is lighter, but she's a fan favorite. There would Mm -hmm. not be, Team Monique would not be Team Monique. They would be, they will be Team Karen. They'd be like, oh, they'd be Team Karen. And even with Ashley, as much as people, like as much as like a whole a lot of people like she's so messy she's so this she still is somewhat of a fan favorite and you would have seen a lot more people talking about how aggressive and hood and bad Monique is on that show and they were like I want her off it was like no she we don't tolerate that here but because it was against Candace people were like oh no it's fine because I don't like her I'm like so that's not how this works Mm -hmm. it's like that's not how this works I'm like I came into this season going, I didn't necessarily like Monique because I caught what she was doing with the whole Kendall thing. Now, people are like, she was gunning for just um, Monique since season, her first day on the, on the show. And I went back and watched season two. And mm-hmm. I'm sitting here like, you are doing all of this. You are like plotting with her boyfriend's ex-wife you're filming with her. You are going out of your way to embarrass her about Jamal. And this is all starting from the fact that she was not impressed that you had four homes. <laughs> Girl, this is not even the same thing. People are like, oh, she was shady to her. I'm like, so she brought up Sherman's criminal past. Sherman has nothing to do with Giselle. That whole scene, unless she was the sex worker, then why are you bringing this up? And the thing about it is, is like, even when it came, mind you, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even, and this is from season three when I think about it, but, um, cause the umbrella was season three. Uh-huh. So 
when she came to Candace's wedding and she was like, uh, Monique's like, I want to apologize to both apologize to both of you at the same time. And it was like, just I don't even want to hear it. I'm like, ma'am, you you took it to this place of, oh, we're involving our personal relationships. We're involving our children. We're involved, we're we're doing that. So for her to say like, y'all tried to hurt my family. I'm like, so you don't think bringing up Jamal's past that literally a good amount of us knew. I'm like, I'm from Baltimore. I know exactly who Jamal Bryan is. I know who this man is. It's like, I've seen the stuff. Cause Taria used to go to his church and it was like, yep. yeah. Cause when she said she, cause I don't, she saw me. I'm like, I heard you on the, another podcast going, oh my God, somebody else knew. And I'm like, yeah. He was supposed to step down for three months. They brought him back in three weeks. Like, we're losing money. You need to come back. Mm -hmm. Like, girl, stop. What are y'all doing? And like, and New Birth need to have him step down. So, hi, y'all. Hello, friends. Um, <laughs> new, the senior pastor that used to be at New Birth was Eddie Long. And in 2010, 2011, allegations of him um, being sexually inappropriate with um, young boys was brought up. And some of them were aged, like maybe age appropriate but again the age of consent is 16 in it in georgia if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. in 2017 eddie long died as senior pastor of new birth they did not remove him he died that's why jamal bryan is there I see. it's like y'all y'all better stop this i'm like oh see y'all they didn't remove eddie long he may not have been preaching as much but he was still senior pastor of new birth so I'm like, before y'all do all this whole he needs to be removed thing, I'm like, so I y'all might want to do your Googles on some things before you come back to me when you've got your research. Because right. don't come to me with like, oh, we need to remove him because he slept with that girl. I'm like, what girl? The Please threshold, it, it sounds like Eddie, Eddie Long created a pretty high bar for what it takes to get removed because he, he didn't wasn't even get even removed. removed. I'm like, right. y'all don't care. It's like, you don't care. So I think my feeling after watching the reunion, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. kind of done with y'all. It's like, and I was always like, I may not like, I didn't like her actions, but I'm like, yeah, Monique need to come back. Like you mm -hmm. need to come back and fix this. But I, yeah, I, I yeah, agree. Not going to. The, well, um, the statement that she made last night to mm -hmm. Candace when she was actually looking at her mm -hmm. and, um, basically said it wasn't about you in the moment and I completely snapped um I like she said more than that but and offered her our apology um and let her know she was triggered like this conversation I know it took her a while to get there but as mm -hmm. Candace said it has been 365 days if she had even said a semblance to that statement, even mm. if she didn't feel it yet, because she probably knew she was going to get there and it may have taken some work with her therapist and pastor, mm -hmm. but she probably knew she was going to get there because she was speaking to the pastor and was like, she didn't deserve this and was crying. So if she had just come up with a two sentence statement that was even close to what she said last night, we could have put this whole thing to bed right. and we could have had her all season and I really am sad if she's not actually returning in any capacity that mm -hmm. we don't get to see her dynamic with the the, the rest of the cast mm -hmm. um, especially Wendy like I think that um Chelsea yeah, that definitely has said, is a missed opportunity because she didn't yeah. get to know Wendy Wendy was right. just like I I don't know what's going on and I yeah you know I, we're going yeah. to we're going to run the gamut on this I can't wait um, mm. Yeah, Chelsea from Uno Bravo has said, like, I re she really feels and I agree with this, but she and Wendy probably would, the, the, um, the, the kids that they have and the, um, the kind of, their lives are pretty similar. I think that mm -hmm. they probably could have established last, a real friendship. Their last friendship. two children are a few, like, they're not that far apart in age. Oh, wait, no, it's her and Ashley. Their right. babies aren't and, that far apart in age. And I think that, like, also there's probably some things that like Wendy could have imparted upon her for in terms of like ways to conduct yourself. I don't think that that conversation at Karen's house. Yeah, she was, wasn't ready to hear that from Wendy because she don't really know Wendy. It Wendy also wasn't, wasn't appropriate. Wrong. 
Yeah. It's, well, it's also inappropriate to place the blame uh, or to place on Monique's shoulders the behavior of all black women. Like, I don't think that's appropriate um, because it's, Monique doesn't act on behalf of all black women. She does not. And the, right. the thing about that is, is like, I've always been of two minds of when she was <laughs> saying it. Mm -hmm. And I love, you know, Team Kern. I love Team Kern, but I just want y'all <laughs> to realize you notice Karen didn't negate what she said when she was sitting there. She hopped on Twitter and negated it. I'm like, well, sweetheart, why didn't you say nothing then? You're like, that's yeah. a lie. Why didn't you say anything? Because I saw it of two minds. Because I got what Wendy was saying. Wendy mm -hmm. does Fox News, where she's mm -hmm. literally the only Black person in the room. So she only, she has it's weird that we put this role on any oppressed group when they're in an all white space that they have to be the representation of whatever oppressed group you're part of. And it's like, that isn't fair. And it's one, like one, Monique doesn't speak for all black people. She, they mm -hmm. don't. And the, the bad part about it is, I think Wendy was talking about it from a scrutinization. It's not that you should walk around like you're representing all black people. It's just that when you do something bad, you are representing all black people for somebody. And right. Like, you know right. that they're watching. Yeah. You know right. why people are watching. You know that what they what they think about us already. Mm -hmm. You've got to be intentional. It's like you um, realize, when like, you have a platform. Yeah, yeah. You have a so platform. So that's the thing. And what got me was that a lot of people were acting like Wendy pulled that out of her ass. And I'm like, she didn't, because a lot of uh -huh. people were like, how dare you say that? I'm like, but y'all say that y'all don't watch basketball vibes, loving hip hop, bad girls clubs for the exact reason that Wendy just said. You're like, I don't watch that stuff. Uh-uh, I don't know. Fighting is hood. We don't do that. Uh-uh, no. We need better representation for us because I saw those articles. That is what uh -huh. they said. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's like- I've heard. I've heard that about Atlanta too, not about right. the fighting, but yeah. that like I don't want to necessarily go into the words that they choose to use for Atlanta, but mm. they're not kind, and they're like these are this is not how we want to represent our black women, um, right? And I, as a white woman, don't really get to say um, yeah. was... anything much further than I have, but I understand. <laughs> like I saw both why... sides to that argument. I was like but she's right she don't represent all black women and and the bad part about it is no one in that room negated what she said no one didn't say that's a little unfair to monique now kern if you thought that was unfair why didn't you say something because you actually agreed it's like don't see this is what i'm, I'm like kern is so good at lying I'm like i'm sorry <laughs> did you negate anything that wendy said you didn't negate anything that Giselle said. She's like, we have to hold ourselves above board because they're watching us because they're in all white Potomac. I'm like, I know y'all see all these black women in Potomac, but Sharice literally said the reason why she couldn't find more black women who live in Potomac is because of how Potomac is. Mm -hmm. So that's why she had to go outside and go get people from Bethesda and Virginia and Baltimore. It's like mm -hmm. they live in Bethesda, but it's like she had to find people that would actually do it. I'm like... Potomac is very, very white. A lot of people think it's not. I'm like, oh, baby, it, it definitely is. It's like, I don't know if y'all know this, but it is. But it's uh -huh. like, she couldn't find a lot of people. And that show was built around Sharice Jackson Jordan because she does live in Potomac. Right. It was like, oh, my girl. So what did we think about the fashion? The fashion? Yes. Oh, like of, they, the, of the of the whole se season or like just, of, we're just talking about the reunion what did you think the, about reunion. the, fashion of the reunion i think that the yeah i think yellow that color yellow on all of them looked yes. amazing um as a invisibly white woman i cannot wear yellow um <laughs> so i was i was in awe of just how beautiful that color looks looked mm -hmm. on all of their skin tones um yeah i'm you may cannot see in zoom but i'm like <laughs> this is my coffee cup oh my god um, You're so <laughs> i'm i am not i am i have no i am no hue <laughs> she's not every hue she's no hue no hue I'm beauty <laughs> I am zero hue. That's gonna be. I should start. Should I start a foundation line of for for people who are invisible like me? Um, you are a so, mess. You are a mess, girl. You know I'm a mess. I in every sense of that word. So funny. 
Oh I'm ridiculous. God. So I'm an invisibly white woman and I don't think that yellow looks good on me, but that color on all of them looked good. Um, yeah. That bow on Candace, when we saw the photos, did not, was just like, whoa. Like I, I had to like do a double take of how crazy it looked. It actually mm. looked like it looked good on stage. I, mm. I'm going to say that. Mm. Um, I think Robin's dress was like my favorite. I don't know about the turtleneck part. Yeah. Um, but I liked how it fit her. I liked mm -hmm. it. It had a nice like silky satin situation going on. I don't know why, like in terms of like Giselle's dress, like why anyone bedazzles anything. And I, Hello, I'm not a fashion cloud. I am not into fashion that much. But like, mm -hmm. if bedazzling is in, like I have no idea. But I, I hate just, it. I <laughs> Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um Wendy Thank you, I, hate it. I don't remember too much about what Wendy was wearing um I remember her looking like very Disney princess she did um, I, I told I told Obi I'm like now hear me out Wendy is in a sit down dress because when she was standing in the picture people were like oh I don't like that dress but when she sat down she had her legs crossed the like the shoes for the sure hair. she looked amazing i'm like see y'all this is supposed my argument this is a sit down dress there's some dresses that yeah. are good for the red carpet but then it's like whoo and then you look at the but then there are dresses like you see them on the red carpet like ooh, oh, yeah i don't like yeah. this but then they sit down it's like okay i see it i see it I yeah see that's it. how i felt about candace's dress like mm, you couldn't okay. see that it was like the bow separate from the whole thing like because right. you're really just seeing the bow and like how that sits on and her, i like, didn't know like the chest. bottom was like like beat it i had no idea till like i think she had like oh till she walked away crying so yeah. it had that little like flapper i saw it i saw thing. it on yeah. the, whoever the designer was i saw it, she had tagged the designer i'm like oh okay that's why and i had to look at it different way like when she oh, walked I away crying cry. and yeah. like you could see the fringe like praying yeah. a little bit yeah like she her body is insane like i just wanted in a little same little tangent like i know she's an extremely tiny women woman and like mm -hmm. clothes tend to look a lot just look, like look a certain the aesthetic is is a certain way for women who are small mm -hmm. and um i'm not i'm i'm really doing a hard time i'm uh, really like hard trying hard here not to like body shame at all because she is a thin tiny woman and i'm not saying that people who aren't that don't look good in clothes but she looked the way her body is shaped is insane like she somehow a nice body she really does she with looks, that tiny so tiny beautiful. body the tiny 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 body and that girl, but she on. still has like a booty on her like i'm when she was like crawling around in that cat suit i was just like i was like okay girl. I was like, okay all right um see, this is okay. why chris like to give you that brown dick okay i see it mm -hmm. i see what's going on okay i'm like okay right. girl, i see you you be hiding a little curves but they coming I out see ain't they? You. i was like okay he's like mm -hmm. yeah. go ahead pop the go-go beat <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then for like Karen and mm. um, what's her name? What's the rest of Mon Monique. Monique? I did not mean that by what's her name, Monique. I just literally forgot. You're like, I literally there like, wait, like, who am I forgetting? There was, I feel like Monique is g -g -g gorgeous. She is. And like, whatever mm. she had on her skin, that like she was just glowing. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was also bedazzled situation on hers, which yeah. just makes me like, next and then karen and like i know that something <laughs> about that like clear taffeta thing where like her, it looks in her clear bra i was like like so there's i know this is a thing that pe like it's in because i see it all the time mm -hmm. where like there'll be like a like a really low v and it'll be like that clear like, taffeta hey. mm -hmm. and it really just reminds me of like 90s outs like ice skating outfits so like can I just tell when you, I see that, so I can't, time, I have to pass on that. Yeah. <laughs> so can I, can I just tell you what was really funny? The first time I saw the picture of yeah. Karen in her dress, I had, I had flashbacks to my prom and I went to prom in 98. We had junior and senior prom. So, so, so did I, yeah. Okay. So when I said that, people were like, wait, you have two proms? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't everybody? They're like, no, like, 
Really? Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. So yeah, ju- my junior prom, the year, like the upperclassmen was the senior prom. I feel like a lot of people had a dress similar to Karen. That took me back to high school. Mm-hmm. Not that it was a bad dress. I was just like, why do I feel like this is from some of my senior, like my junior prom. I'm like, why is this? It, it reminded me of prom, but Karen yeah. looks, I'm so glad that Karen upgraded her hair. Cause mm-hmm. man, going back and watching first season of Potomac is like, whew. and it's like, I, look-wise, Giselle yes. has not changed. Karen has, she definitely like had the best come up I've seen is Karen. Like kids call it a glow up. Like absolutely, I'm like the, the coat, <laughs> that blonde is the right shade. The um mm-hmm. the makeup is great, so it's yeah. ironic. So this is really funny. So the guy, no IG Jeremy, who does mm-hmm. a lot of the housewives, he stopped Karen for this reunion. Riley mm-hmm. Knox, which is um Monique's one of Mook's, Monique's best friend, also she's best friend from DJ Richie Sky. So he has said that repeatedly, and so has she. Riley styled Monique and Lisa Nicole Cloud made Giselle's dress. I was like, mm-hmm. look at this, Ed, look okay. at all these Bravo hookups. What's going on? It's like, oh, okay, Lisa Nicole Cloud. And of course, Cal did her hair. I'm like, y'all, it's like, I get the fashion and I'm, I'm glad they were like, we just want you to be with a um, very good stylist. <sighs> I, I Lisa Nicole too. Cloud, I'm gonna need you to stop using the bedazzle. <laughs> <laughs> Please check a calendar. You know what? Yeah. What about your lesbian relationship, bitch? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all I, that's all I remember. <laughs> girl wait tell her darren tell her tell her you're married tell her you don't want to see her again i was like oh i ought to take this shit too because this is way too funny it's like i ought to take this too it's like do you it's hear too- this lunatic do you hear this <laughs> lunatic she called me up and t- told her husband to say break up say y'all over say you're married with children i'm like girl he been cheating on you before you became his wife and you still married that cheating client I wish that the podcast could see some like when I was calling out Lisa Nicole Cloud like I had my mic to my face and I, I want I want the reaction of you having to hide yourself in your snoggy and to laughter like um we might need to release Lisa like a fit. <laughs> um pardon me pardon me um check check um I feel like we need to release like 15 seconds of this video. I have to. I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I, just have, um, I have to do this somehow. This is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Oh my God, my story, um, that is hilarious. But the, the 90s skater outfit with the like, the nude taffeta, like I, it triggers me. It just makes me think of Nancy Kerrigan. And like, I can't I can see do that too. it. I, can see I can't that too. do it. It reminds like, you of your prom. Of prom. It reminds me. Prom realness. The category is ice, ice skater. skater prom realness. <laughs> <laughs> the category is, okay. See, this is what happens. RuPaul Drag Race comes back this week, y'all. On I New get Year's that Day. reference. The category is. See? I get that. See? I get Good. that. See? Love um, it. So, I'm, not, I'm not completely out of it. Um, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we got three and a half hours for a reunion which is i think this is the longest reunion ever with three and a half typically at the most is three parts but atlanta it, was with with phaedra and the reveal was four parts it was four, oh that's right it was it was um and i will never forget that because i was just like yeah i mean i might be alone but i love the reunion it's traumatizing for everybody in the cast and you love watching the reunion because something always comes out like wait a minute well, the, like, lies. Every, the lies the so lies every, every the lies the lies like, there's so much going on this is so every much going time on. i see somebody lie on the cam on camera and the during the season i'm like first of all my brain's like you know your ass is getting recorded you, you know we're, we're talking about this at the reunion and then also i'm just like 
Like, I'm just like, I can't wait for that to come up later when you can't run away. Um, and it's like, you got to sit here and address it because you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause when I think about a good reunion, it was the reunion that Portia and Kenya got into the physical altercation world. So in one reunion, we got Portia dragging Kenya down some stairs. <laughs> Nene saying, I said what I said. And the we reunion get the so read of the century from Phaedra. That was all in the same damn reunion. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Wait a minute. The ch and check that with your medium-sized yep. pizza was all the same. Mm -hmm. That was uh -uh. all the same reunion. Wait, the same I was reunion like, Kendra got dragged down the stairs. Yes, yeah, because remember as... that happened in the first part. Portia didn't come back after that. I was Get like, the hell oh, out of here. Damn. I am I'm like I am as shook as about this <laughs> as you are about the reunion for New Jersey being in March. That this is how shook March. That is crazy at me. <sighs> okay, now I need to just go back and watch all the reunions for Atlanta because you they the sound are epic. bites. The they sound are epic. bites. So, so nasty see each and other. So rude. So Wait, nasty. as we see each other also from the same I, reunion? I don't, I'm trying to think if it was. God, those, God, it's I like, There's just, so much going on. I'm like, you know what? I, I think I'm going to give myself a back. IG project of Gold Star <laughs> Housewives. And Nene <sighs> Leaks is a Gold Star Housewife. I don't, and I was like, yeah. I need he to made just it fun to be like a minute because I'm, I'm blown away for a minute. I'm just realizing the magnanimity of the bullshit that those ladies, ladies have given us just in the reunion. I'm just out of breath. <laughs> I got to look away. I got to go lay down. <laughs> it is. God, there's so both of these franchises, they just work so fucking hard for us. So. Right. When like, you call, girl. when you talk about Lucy Lucy Apple Juicy and is does Denise sleep with women sometimes? Like it's just I'm girl. I'm, I'm just like, like we don't care. I'm like we Denise, you yeah. played this all wrong. It's like you played I this mean, all wrong. I would have literally my, been like, yeah. girl, why are we talking about this? Don't y'all have something else to do? I mean, I I understand why. Like I. If Denise is actually sexually fluid, I would not have wanted to necessarily admit that on TV because people are not down with that. Like it's it, she, I feel like she would have probably endured some some negative negative press, and that's something Denise Richards has lived with for a really long time. So I probably would have denied it to like is. Yeah, as as much as she did because it's no one's fucking business. But that I part? mean, I think I think that she could have shut it down really easily and just been like, "Yeah, I fucked Brandy." Like, yeah, we're yeah, not. She licked my box. Okay, so what else is going on? Yeah, like, like we're I'm not sorry, we're not as bad. Me, I'm like, I'm not doing this. If we're, we're not we're, we're if if we're as bad as the worst person we've had sex with, then like, I uh, should be, I should be in jail. Right. It's like, <laughs> man. It's like I mm, somebody should be dragging me across the table because child with my wig, me holding on to my wig. It's like <laughs> you, Lord have mercy. Stephanie, did you just say she licked my box? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like Denise is like she can go bravo, no, bravo, fucking just, bravo. It's like this uh, the best. That's like, the, we get. We did get bravo, bravo, fucking bravo, bravo. out of it. There's, it was just like, there's wait, plenty of screen names that are thanking her for that. Pretty much. I was like, y'all don't stop putting <laughs> this up here. It's like let me leave me alone. So oh my think god, that that's was... hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what, what y'all want us to do. What y'all want? I need I need a snuggie to hide my face in when I do can't stop laughing. Wait, you, you know what's funny? I have mine and I've had mine for a long time. I don't know if they still make snuggies at this point. Oh, I don't know either. Again, mine like, was I don't a think gift. I'm like, this thing is like ago. the best. Okay. So do you yeah. think we needed three and a half hours? Um I, I like we needed I, more, but I yeah, I was just gonna say like we talked about this a little bit ago. Like I could have watched all eleven uncut hours. Hello. I'm like like I would have see this. I would have sit through them getting their makeup touched up. I would have sit through their lunch. I would have sit through it all just Can because. I? 
I would, I, I love a freaking reunion. So my too. answer is it's always too short unless it's a boring season. And that's the thing. This, it, it had no filler episodes. Can I just tell you, Monique's um makeup artist, that's Kay Dempster on Instagram. He used amber lights on heart lid. And that took me straight on back. Cause I, I didn't wear makeup when I was a um, young teenage girl. I didn't start wearing makeup until like later on in college and after college. And one of the mm-hmm. first high end eyeshadows I ever got was Mac amber lights. I was like, mm. Oh shit. I got to go back and get amber lights. Cause man, that looks good on Brown skin. Be- she it was so funny. Beautiful. She, her, her makeup, her glam all season has been amazing. And he's been doing her makeup all season, but I was like, let me go re up on some amber lights. Cause man, it's like, Oh yeah, my she God. She just took me straight back. I thought I loved her little, I love the pon- the ponytail. I think they all as a group looked great. And I think fine. I'm like, yes, so many needs to win because everybody knows they're not the best dressed cast. But I thought uh-huh. this was a beautiful reunion. Even when they were wearing all white last year, I thought if they all wear the same color, they look amazing in a group photo. Uh-huh. So, so the yellow, I'm like, I'm all for it. I was like, I loved it. Um, I was very impressed by Karen. I know people didn't like the crimson Robin's hair. I'm like, I, I get it. It was like, I, oh no, I didn't either. I, I thought that like, like sh- I am a Robin. I was like, stand, why did they crimp but, uh-huh. hair? I'm like, I don't know what y'all were going for. I don't. I thought her makeup looked great. She had a great lip color. I think collectively everybody looked great. And so I I'm liked like, the oh. meme about Robin's hair where it looked where somebody like superimposed a CVS receipt on it. Right. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I'm like the memes about her hair. I'm glad she's being a fair good sport about it. I think that's the good thing about Robin and Wendy. They're very good sports. All the four like the degree memes about her, she laugh at them. Like I get it. She though. reposted a bunch that like when I would repost other one other people's memes, she would repost mine, and I'm like, oh, oh my she's God. not. It was like, she's oh, not even following me, but right. she's, <laughs> she's like, she reposted me, and I'm like, oh, okay, she's a good sport. I, I think for this, you got to be a good sport, and for her, this to be her first season, and you she's do. a good sport. I'm like, go ahead, Wendy, good on you. So let's woo, let's dive into the conversations. So let's start with the versus stuff. Giselle versus Karen. Now, this is probably one of my favorite front of me relationships in any. Mm-hmm. any housewives franchise because you know they're just going to shade each other back it's not going to get violent <laughs> we'll get to that um but <laughs> it won't get violent and you kind of knew some of this stuff was coming mm-hmm. you know in l- some of the press that um karen has done with interviews she always brings giselle up and i'm like now mm-hmm. karen I-, I get it so it's like they're the best kind of frenemies and it's like the history of the show they they shade each other and a lot of people forget the kind of shady things that karen has done to giselle because they're like giselle's messy i'm like y'all karen is too it's like oh she's very messy her and giselle the same way because if they say giselle lies i'm like girl karen will ball face lie to your face and it was like so them her talking about jamal and every Hugh Beauty, it was like, I thought it was a little bit more evenly matched. When those two go each other, it's more evenly matched to me because I'm like, well, you, you've you both been nasty to each other. But when Karen was at the reunion after losing both of her parents within a month to six week time, the first person that got up to go see her was Giselle. And it was like, that's because she cares about you. And it was like, I, this, I was like, I know y'all have like this thing, but I think they genuinely do love each other. That's why Karen wanted to bring her to Surrey. I'm like, you don't like her, but you bring her to your hometown to meet your, be around your family. I don't buy that. Like, because you actually are friends and them having this frenemy dynamic is really uh-huh. cute for the show. Like, I know it won't go too far, but it's like, they still have love there. And it's like, but I enjoy their, I, I enjoy their banter. I don't know what it is. I'm like, it feels like it's not Potomac without them like shading each other every two seconds. <laughs> So I have a couple of thoughts on that. Um, mm-hmm. Firstly, I don't dig on Giselle making fun of Karen's age because they're like within yeah. seven it's years like, of each girl, other. Like, like take ex- your okay, stop like, girl, it. Take, put, put your bang gay on your knees. What you doing? I'm like, see, y'all not. I mean, for me. I think that like at the point when which she's making fun of um, Karen about Robin's hats, like Giselle yeah. might have been th- 49. And 
I can imagine maybe at 49 thinking someone in, in, that 56 or 57 is like, we're not, oh, I'm not that old. Like, you know, not realizing or mm. not wanting to realize that you're about to be in your 50s. Like, it's like why that, read, like, there might have been some denial. She's years there. old. She's not Victoria. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and I, the other couple things I wanted to say is um, I think that Karen probably brought her to Surrey because she feels I think she feels like there's a competition with her and Giselle and mm -hmm. that like she probably wanted her to be like like this is my history like not like look at me but more like um I want you to understand me a little more mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. I feel maybe like to shut down some of that shade yeah um also to um it make so become introducing yourself or introducing your friends to your your family especially on um your family home in which your family has like created generational wealth they mm -hmm. now own the plantation that their family was slaves on like mm -hmm. i feel like she wants to create a vulnerable narrative so like giselle will just like ease up on her a little bit is maybe a was a driving force there i don't I don't know that I necessarily believe it's because they're BFFs and she just wants to like be around her. And no. I, th I feel like there was like an underlying reason, which was like, I want her to see like where I'm coming from and what I am, what my family is capable of. And the third thing about Giselle and her wanting to be the source of comfort and the um, mediator, I have this theory the people who tend to do that um, are actually trying to put the spotlight on themselves, like, yeah, um, a little bit. Like, yeah. so I know that this is a pastime of of Giselle's, where she's the first lady and she's an active mediator, and I think that she has a lot of experience in it. And I think that there's also something ego boosting about being the mediator and, and being the first person that someone turns that that or the first person that you um that that goes to someone when they're in pain mm -hmm. i think that there is a level to that that is i don't believe that she's uncaring and does not care for karen i think mm -hmm. that there might be something a little more egotistical driving it um that's that's what because like <laughs> other other housewives that have done this like i'm always skeptical of somebody who's like trying to be the mediator like heather mm -hmm. gay out of the gate also huh. i'm i'm just like well first of all she She's seems like she has stock little crawler she really yeah. is <laughs> she seems like she might have a little stockholm syndrome about her friend jen um mm -hmm. and she, I also get the get the idea that she wants to nourish her because she's clear. Jen is clearly in pain. Yeah. But the the constant need to be a mediator, I always like have my eye on, on that person. It was like y'all stop trying to make this happen. It's like leave. I like the frenemy dynamic between Karen and Giselle. I really do. I feel yeah. like if they were bust besties all of a sudden, I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's like y'all being so fake. It's like uh uh. It's like. I need the front of me thing. I'm like, Potomac really mm -hmm. does need that. I'm like, see, that's their thing. It's like, it don't work in Atlanta because they know how to read each other. It's like, uh -huh. Potomac, y'all y'all getting up there, but y'all like the high society ladies. You're like, we're Potomac and you know, we have to treat ourselves. So y'all not going to do what they do in Atlanta. So it's mm -hmm. like, I, I think this franchise, they just need that dynamic between Karen and Giselle. I enjoy it because even at the end of the reunion, she's like, I know you can't hear this right now. And it's like, yeah, she's not going to hear this right now, Karen. Maybe you can like go to, you know, the tea room in DC with her in like three months when we open back up. I'm just kidding. We're opening back up in three years. So it's like, you're going to go or, sometime. Or maybe when Giselle see. watched the reunion, she might've been in a place to receive it. Yeah, maybe because um, it's like they they didn't they filmed it a few weeks ago, so I don't. Yeah, it's like I mm. feel like that was in November. I I'm sorry to do this to you at time. I'm I sorry. It's like oh my god, oh my god. November was last. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh my god, this is last month. I'm so. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, and so, we're almost in January. I'm sorry. This um, is so but, bad. <laughs> 
that is time. No, time is no thing. Time is such a toast. Coast. This is such a social construct. What is going on? I don't know what day. Um, what day is this? I don't even know. <laughs> like, it is Monday. Oh my god. It oh, is. It's, it's, Happy it Monday. Is 28. Um, I have a case of the Mondays but, when it comes to time at this point. Okay, next um, verses. <clears throat> I did want to say that even when they do fight, like when they were fighting and that mime showed up, like I'm sorry, I, I almost lost my shit. She's like, so what are you much. doing? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> I, I love how like Karen's yelling at her and she called her a clown. And I know this is probably set up because we know the mime's coming and the cl- word of the, the use of the word I swear, her reaction to like, what the fuck is this mime doing here? Maybe, and and like, like, they look like they genuinely were like, what the fuck is going on? Well, what they did might Bravo do known, now? They might not have known the mime was coming, but I feel like they, they told Karen to use the word clown because it worked so well because like Giselle without, with, she, broke a, she broke a straight face, but not really was like, that's a clown. That's the clown. I was like, and I was, I'm sorry. I'm somebody who has a fear of clowns. I feel like I would oh, just punch him. Like, get away from me. Clowns are evil. There's nothing scarier than a clown. Get the fuck away. From, I'm a mime. I don't give a goddamn what you are. You got paint on your face. Get out of my face. <laughs> You're not going to get a moment from you. You no, got your like, you, you need to go somewhere. <laughs> oh my God. Like, Karen straight got out of her seat. I don't think <gasps> she was into clowns like, either. Wait, and I know there were probably producers there. Hey, come back. So this is for Monique. They're like, what? I don't give a damn. Leave me alone. Like, <laughs> Giselle's oh. like, got that glass of wine. Like, and Karen's like, stop engaging him. And she's like, what am I supposed Look to do? He's right there. He's right there. <laughs> we always say. I'm like, so oh. like that's that's the kind of moment that I really Love enjoy. It. Giselle, like like when laughter. she's like quick and funny, and mm-hmm. I like even though they were screaming at each other, they <laughs> that scene mind, was and he's like, hysterical. Oh. And then he was posing. I'm sitting here like. I'm like, I hope Monique paid you a handsome price because if one of them ladies had cold clock you with their purse like Mama Dorothy, I feel like you'd be like, uh-uh, I got hazard pay. What is the hazard pay? She popped me in the head with a pocketbook. It's like, oh. pay. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? It's like, I'm just oh, giving out invites. Yeah. And here oh. you go, popping me in the head. I'm like, girl. Ugh. Oh, my God. That's so let's terrible. talk about a not- fun Giselle versus Monique and her binder <laughs> okay well when I okay so I had heard from Taria from I think Bra- oh, Bravo oh my OMG mm-hmm. the account called Bravo oh, oh, oh OMG yeah um that they had that uh Zach had said, this will be Giselle's reckoning. And then when we saw that first episode, Mm -hmm. I was like, ooh, it's on. What else is in that binder? What's going to happen? We never saw the fucking binder again. So I'm bummed about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to know what's in the tab called Monique. I want to know what's in the tab called former friend. Mm -hmm. Actually, just get me a photocopy of that binder because... She should just read it. She just show it on her OnlyFans. Get on OnlyFans, Monique. Show it on your YouTube page. You'll get lots of traction. I was like, oh yeah, only fans to read the binder. I would pay for that. It's like, see, you you looking for different stuff, Monique. Monique versus Giselle was very interesting for me because Monique is full of shit. (laughs) I'm like, ma'am, you are doing all of this. You went Dracaris on your relationship with Giselle, <laughs> even though y'all really don't have a relationship per se, but you were like, oh, I'm going scorched earth, earth on this. And you brought up this whole thing, which was late as fuck about Jamal. I'm like, girl. But it was still so know, juicy. It was like, wow. And she's like, yeah, but she also made it seem like the person that his ex was like a complete stranger and she wasn't because you know her. It's like, wait a minute. It's like, ma'am, you've been friends with her for a couple of years. You are, you're like, made it seem like some random stranger came into my mentions and gave me this. I'm like, I'm pretty sure she just forwarded you the text because y'all have each other's phone number. And I'm like, Monique, why okay. are you doing this now? You were, you said on your lives that after the first couple of lives, Bravo was like, if y'all don't, uh-uh, we shutting this down, stop it. She said on her live out of her mouth, 
this plot was supposed to come up at the season four reunion. You knew before season five filming was going on that Giselle was participating in a plot. Y'all don't see my air quotes. Plot on, you know, doing this to you. So you knew that she was doing this and you still did solo scenes with her. You went to lunch, mm-hmm. you broke bread, you were slapping five, you let this woman into your home and rode in a car with her to Newburgh. Mm-hmm. How, mm-hmm. and this is somebody who has watched Mob Wives, and if you know Drita, <laughs> Drita is the epitome of, it is on site. So for you to say that, you know, I wanna get Giselle for this, you need to explain to me like I'm three, why it wasn't on site for Giselle Bryant. There's no way she could come in my house. If we go on a group events, I will be cool because this is how I'm like, everybody's like, well, she could have said, she had to film with her. She didn't have to film solo scenes with her. There are a lot of ladies on Atlanta that don't get along. You don't see them filming solo scenes. A lot of wives on housewife shows, they don't get along. You don't see them filming solo with them. It's in a group event at the most. Um, they just not I, around each other. I think Taria said it well. We're, and this circles back to like, we want to be friends with the cool girls. Like, mm-hmm. I think that not only was Monique to consider doing all of this, doing her job, um, but but also um, being in with, being on Giselle's good side bodes well for people on this cast. So mm-hmm. I do I personally, my brain could not reconcile knowing she was involved with the questioning the paternity and a potential plot Mm -hmm. to bring this up on the show and ruin Monique's family. I don't, I would not be able to reconcile this and Mm -mm. allow her into my home and speak to my husband. And I will say that, that uh, showing that scene last night where we didn't see um, during the season where Chris was like, Baby looks a lot like me, doesn't he? And she's like, Giselle's like, yeah, why, why, why would he? he? And um, and he's thinking like, cause bitch, you were you were telling people he's not mine. Exactly. Um, so then when they saw the unaired scene of her talking like, about the rumor, they're like, see, there was a plot. I'm like, no, she was just saying there's a rumor. <laughs> I don't know about, I cannot, I'm not about to say whether I think that, the, that they were trying to get Monique's off the show or fuck right. with their family or whatever. Right. But I, I could not reconcile it, but I don't believe that Monique totally has, <laughs> I'm not dipping my toe into the, the um, diagnosis pool, but mm-hmm. I don't think that, she, I think she has the ability to push aside feelings um, to her detriment because we see what happens when they surface. Correct. Um, so I feel like she probably pushed aside those feelings um, and did what she needed to do for the show. Mm-hmm. And um, and because it bodes well for her as a castmate to not be on Giselle's bad side. Maybe there was a little bit of like, if I become this girl's friend, mm-hmm. perhaps this plotation, I love that Candace used that word, by the way. Hilarious. Perhaps this plotation, this plotation. will not, con- will not there continue. There was words. I say, what the hell? I love it. I, <laughs> I, I make up my own words, so I love it. Oh, I, I just love it. it. Um, so perhaps the plotation won't continue or she'll shut it down if we're like become friends. And that's There's- the part that I'm very confused about because this is supposed mm-hmm. to come up at season four. The reunion. Uh, I five, didn't I'm realize like, that. You guys have so much more tea than I, I do. <laughs> like, because that's the thing. That's what Monique said they were going to bring to the season four reunion. And I'm like, mm. but they didn't. And the thing about it is, you're saying that Giselle, when Chris said she was the ma- main plotter, I'm like, I feel like y'all are giving Giselle way too much credit in this because it was Gigi. Gigi went right to production. I was going to gonna say, wasn't it Gigi? Gigi hey. went to production. She's like, I had never talked to Giselle. So how is Giselle the main plotter of this? And she wasn't even in with all of the information. Then you were bringing in Sharice and Ashley went on her IG story or her live saying Sharice had nothing to do with this. And I'm like, okay, so y'all need, you need more teeth, Monique. Your your dinosaur needs more teeth because it's crumbling. It's like, what do you, girl? It's like, you're set, it's now, she say, she say, 
unless you have concrete proof, which by the way, you do not, that she was trying to hurt your family. You're just having, it's more of, you just want to believe it because you don't like Giselle. And it's like, it's fine. You don't have mm-hmm. to. She don't like your ass either. So, I mean, I feel like you're even. So I, I have this theory when it comes to Monique and Giselle. Oh, she, go was ahead. Trying to play, she was ready to play cool with Giselle in the beginning, try to act like she wasn't involved in the plot. The minute that Giselle didn't take her side in the physical fight, she was like, I want nothing to do with you. She was like, oh, so then I don't have to act mm. like we jumping cool. So now I can do this because I have a feeling if she had taken Monique's side in this fight, none of this would have happened. And I'm shout out to Rodney, the voice, because I'm like, yeah, that totally makes sense. It's like, yeah. I've, I've hmm. certainly been there. Once you if if we have each other's secrets or we like Mm -hmm. there's stuff between me and a friend and you Mm -hmm. start if you you sever that i'm not keeping your secrets anymore and it's It's not a lot of people do that because that's what the guy from the black socialites may his soul rest in peace Mm -hmm. that's what happened with him and sharice they had a falling out and then all of a sudden he had no problem not keeping her secrets anymore and then he got really really cool with monique and I don't know if she sought him out, he started, or she just, I don't know how that happened. And I think he's explained it as other interviews he's done. I think he kind of explained it because that's the thing. It's like, he used to run Sharice's website. He started the Black Socialites and he has been to premiere parties. And uh-huh. was just like, yeah, so now it's like all of a sudden you saw him only really talking about Candace, Giselle, Karen, basically anybody that was cool with Sharice, he was nasty, he was either putting out tea or saying kind of rude things about them on the page. I don't want to say Uh, cruel, like I think it was going back and forth. And so when Chris mentioned it, when he said the blogger who went after my children, he was talking about him because Um. Kyle, um, he was trying to talk about his kids. I think he reached out to maybe his ex. I don't know if he was successful, but he Uh basically tried to label him as a deadbeat dad. And it's very interesting to watch people get mad at how somebody retaliates. You actually did threaten his family. You are bringing up all this information about his ex and his kids. Mind you, Chris has said on that show that he he doesn't have a good relationship with his older child. He has uh-huh. said that. So that is not anything really new. And it's like, uh-huh. so why would you bring all of this up? So you had no right. problem. So to watch Giselle do the thing that she said, I'm so mad somebody would do this to me. I'm like, ma'am, you're not above this. You just uh-huh. might want to seem like I had to get down in the gutter with this. You kind of didn't. But no, you know, no, we all have a choice, choice not to do that. I'm like, you made a uh-huh. choice. I'm like, it. I don't agree with it. I thought it was just low. Is it iconic? Bro? housewife reunion history absolutely Absolutely. i could i'm like i don't have to like something to recognize how iconic it was because i felt some sort of way about kim bringing that goddamn bunny lisa renna is crazy because i wouldn't have cried i'd have got off that couch and beat her ass with that bunny i'm like bitch did you just bring this bunny to the dead somebody got a match (laughs) somebody got a match here give me a trash can put that bunny Uh right in there light that bitch on fire i'm sorry if it is so toxic why are you holding on to this bitch fuck you okay girl fuck you i like "Ah!" and it was i'm just imagining how good that at reunion would have become if you were there setting trash cans and bunnies on fire let me tell you something somebody got a a steel trash can you got some lighter fluid in the match hey let me help you put that bunny right on in there Give, give me that light fluid. Now, let's have- Is Oscar the Grouch in the back? Give me that trash can. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, y'all better than me. I'm like, and all Lisa Renner did is sit there and cry. I'm like, <laughs> but you get all big and bold when y'all on Zoom. Girl, Lisa, shut up. <laughs> shut up. We you, we have breathed enough life into Lisa Renner for a like, lifetime girl, just now. Lisa, please mm. leave us alone. Um, I will say that- I completely agree that like maybe once that Giselle did not have her back, that it mm-hmm. became a mad day for her. Oh, absolutely. And on the and on the converse, what would had had what it would have looked like for Ashley if she hadn't. Yeah. Um, that mm-hmm. would have been very interesting. I would like you to see. You know, she'd have she... brought out that video. You know, oh, she would have brought out what video. happened in the basement. It was like you know oh, that video so would have magically appeared all of a sudden. 
Somebody mailed it to me. It's on a VHS. I don't know how it got here. The, the, the company mailed it to me, but you said there's no camera in your basement. What security company doesn't put a camera in a public place? Your bathroom, probably not. Your bedroom, probably not. Your basement, a public space in your house that the security has to where, monitor and you got people in your house. Girl, what? Where the, where, where your kids play, things like this that like you might want to keep an eye on. Like, what? okay. I was like, girl. So, I was like, what? I would like access to the choose your own adventure book of this season. I was like, <laughs> what would it, what would it have looked like if Ashley had taken Candace's side? What, what would it have looked like no if Giselle to that statement? Like, what she said, maybe, oh, I don't want to get involved. I really want to choose your own adventure as mm-hmm. to like what the uh, what the endings would have been. What would it looked like? What would it have looked like? Okay, oh, and boy. and as much as like everybody's like this is iconic, I'm like it is. I, I mean, I've never seen something like this at a reunion. Do I think she mm-hmm. was right? No. And it's like, ma'am, you're doing a lot of this. But if someone says, so why did you film with her? Oh, it's my job. I'm like, so please don't pull this job shit with me. He's she like, was probably going. putting it away because He's like she was she, that's what she it, does. Like Dr. Wendy says, I'm we're gonna put a we're gonna button this. I'm like she oh, buttoned it up and we we find out what happens to Monique when she puts boxes on shelves mm-hmm. uh, and carpet compartmentalizes and right. then all of a sudden um, she um unfastens the button and it's like we off to the races, Dracaris. <laughs> it's right. like I, it's or, fine. If you feel like yeah. I don't want to fuck with this bitch at all. Yeah, you go Dracarys, but man, you can't go into another season of filming with, with with a binder of all of your cast members and the main cast member who is very transparent and is a literally a self-drag literally <laughs> said to you, let's not do this. I'm like, yeah, because Ashley, you know you got a big chunk in that daggone binder. Why would she have a why would she have a tab for you and Karen? She has a tab for her such that I even have a tab for myself. I'm like, why would What's you in- do I'm sorry, but um What's in her therapy bill? It's like what was the reason? I'm like, what girl, you could have just came with your Giselle folder. You don't need a binder. This is when you know you bored in in quarantine. Why are you going to the Kinkos? Why are you using all <laughs> Chris Samuels ink in her printer? Why are you why are you getting all the color tabs? Got your label maker, your Damo label maker, and you making tabs. I'm like, girl, you ain't got no. You have three kids. You, you have know a she's bird that type you potty trained, which I'm like, you, it's a. Bird. You know she's so type A that like she this like, is probably not even a like wasn't even. She's like this ain't nothing. I'm like I know Ryan right. helped you. It's fine. I'm like that's what best friends do. It was like she your best friend. She, so she like let me. She definitely has has more than one binder in her life of where things are because oh, that's just the she way did. she is and this it's is like where that the holy whore thing i was like ma'am you didn't invent that i know where this come from that came from off the youtube you heard that from somebody and riley knox is your friend i you think it's still hilarious with dj rishi sky so believe me you had help she didn't say she made this on her own she's like i just brought this bi- i brought my binder i'm like why and you only used it for le- like literally the last 10 minutes of the first part of the reunion girl what else is in the binder i you hope that out? i hope for the sake of the binder i hope that that we just didn't see its use throughout the maybe, 11 maybe hours we, maybe it's like maybe y'all have uncut maybe we will get a um i would i need to know the contents reveal. of that binder and maybe she snaked the term pastor holy whore mm-hmm. but i will tell you that I gasped I when I like, heard it. It was, ma'am. it's like, it was. Why? It's like, pastor, holy whore. I'm like, girl. And, the, and the th- that's the thing that got oh me about her. Chris literally said on the live, don't take shots at me to get to her. Monique, why are you taking shots at Jamal to get to Giselle? And then she didn't give you what you wanted. You didn't mm-hmm. get the rent of tears. You didn't mm-hmm. get her sitting there with tears running down her face. Um, have you been watching Giselle this whole series? She only, you are not Cal. She's only in crying in front of Cal. She, and that's oh, it right. because it's a trusted right. place. She she barely cried in front of Robin. She looked very uncomfortable though. It was just like, I can't pop this bitch in the face. I'm like, I can't give her. She's like, you want something out of me and you're not going to get it. So you didn't get it. 
It's right. like and I rouse her up more than anybody. It's like she can get her uncomfortable. But Monique, she was like, girl, you girl, I'm not giving you what you want. I'm not gonna I... give you what you want, hun. It's like I'm not doing this. So I'm like, and that's the people are like, oh my gosh, she's so embarrassed. I'm like, it is embarrassing to like talk about this on national television. But sweetheart, if you search the YouTube, we knew about that months ago. I'm like, this is old. This is old T. And that girlfriend that you, this ex that you went to, she's like, I was his girlfriend for eight years. I'm like, so you were his girlfriend while he was engaged to tweet? Because he was engaged <laughs> to tweet. So were you there then? Why ain't you coming after tweet? Oh, I know why. But it's just like, uh, mm -hmm. it bothers you that he's starting over with Giselle, but he was engaged to tweet. So when were you his ex? When? He got divorced 12 years ago. I'm like, when did this happen? Let me know when this happened. Let me know when your timeline hands up. Oh yeah, Monique is on the cover of her magazine, December 2020. Baby, there are uh -huh. friends that I'm like, you have been lying in wait for this. So you did all of this because she don't like, she wasn't impressed by your four homes. She was shading you, you shading her back. You said that she was jealous because everybody is jealous of you fucking Chris Samuels and having this life in your four homes and your and your bird and your three kids. And I don't know what else you think we're jealous of. Baby, you don't know Jamal Bryant. You don't know what kind of lifestyle Giselle used to live. And to a certain extent, she does still get to live it. Ma'am, uh -huh. he gets flew out. He gets flewed out. Do you know how much money he makes just for someone to ask him preach for 20 minutes? This man, oh, it's like she imagine. is not impressed. This is not NFL Wives, Monique. She is not impressed by you. And the bad part about it is, if you was a real bitch, you wouldn't care. I'm like, girl, I don't give a fuck what Giselle think. I'm like, yeah. I'll, if, she, if you pay her dust, you wouldn't have been putting it together a binder. It's like, wait a minute, why you ain't paying none of these bitches dust? You have this wonderful life that you say you have, but you ready to take someone down because they didn't hop on your side of the fight and that iced out plan you wanted for Candace backfired on your ass. It's like, uh, ma'am, you told them to their face. You do not have to invite me to group events. It is okay. You don't have to invite me. So why are you sitting here saying they iced you out? You said don't invite you. Uh -huh. Which one is it? It's like, no, that's like, so don't sit here and say that we iced you out when you said don't invite me. She's like, I did say that. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. So what's the problem? You well, said I don't invite you. I mean, there is nuance there. You can say it's okay to not invite me, but I'd also feel excluded at the same time. Like you can. I mean, yeah, that's true. It's like I like so what she it can still like, make you really like, sad that yeah. your actions caused you. I mean, that's so my my thing with Monique is like I feel, and I said a lot of this on Taria's podcast, which is mm -hmm. I think she just doesn't have the right words to say what she's what's she going don't. on with her she could say for right now she didn't say for if she had said you know if y'all having a group events in the next few weeks it's okay if you don't invite me but you just said don't invite me to your group events they're like okay that makes this easy i don't even have to yeah. think about inviting you because you said it's fine and it's she like, can also say it made me sad that i wasn't invited like and they didn't even come to though, her event so that's where that came from because they didn't mm -hmm. come to the live podcast show um Okay. Yeah, so I think that maybe that it was, she was saying that and she meant it, but at the same time, she probably was like, I wish it wasn't this way. She and thought they would still kind of go, you know, I feel kind of bad excluding her. It's like, but for Robin, it's like, mm -hmm. she was like, no, you knew Giselle, but Giselle really didn't have any group events this year. So she wasn't having nobody there. It's like, I, mm. And I heard mm -hmm. Wendy's point where she said, it was my daughter sip and see. I wasn't going to let the first time y'all see each other be something for my daughter and my family. I'm not doing that. Especially so like, with the potential drama of her husband's family showing correct, up. Like, correct. There was only one slot for drama and it would have been. It would have been, it's like, I think the family drama would have been worse. Like, oh my God, y'all doing this on film. It's like, oh my God, we ain't um, talking yeah. years. We've been married 10 years, which I was like, Oh wow. It's like that's and it's that's intense. the other thing about this fight being like the Lucy Lucy Apple Juicy of Potomac that mm -hmm. we didn't get to see more conversation as to why this is going on. It's really mm -hmm. not any of our business, but still being Eddie being so transparent, which damn he is fine. <laughs> it's like 
He is, and he so, is so fun. cute. Like, yes. Yes. He's so fun. It's like, okay. And then him being very honest and very measured when he said it, like they just don't get along. We don't have a real relationship and he sounds sad about it. But I think he's also like, I don't know what else I can do about mm-hmm. this. And I think his family may be too proud after seeing like, cause one, this is now an international show. Internationally, it may be like a few months before they see this, but it's still, it could reach his family and they'll be like, oh, I'm definitely not speaking to his ass now. How dare you bring up our family business on television? Oh, I can't that imagine happens. that's going to bode well for him. No. Yeah. So it's like, if they weren't talking to you for the last 10 years, I don't think they're going to. And I guess at this point, he just has to go. I, I mean, we still invite them. We're holding out hope. So, I, you know, I'm just, I'm fine with that. I'm like, okay. Maybe he's, yeah, maybe he's hoping to appeal to their softer side and mm-hmm. see that it's been, it's, been devastating for him but most likely if they're if they're the type of people that are just not speaking to their son that they're probably going to be air on the side of like now you're talking about us on national international exactly. television exactly it's like you have yeah you we're have good. dug the grave good. further i'm good love and joy it's like yeah yes. we're not going to do this with you okay yeah. let's talk about another versus all right karen versus wendy karen versus wendy it's odd to talk about because I feel like a spicy it's a spicy take but it may go <laughs> well the reason why Karen didn't see it for Wendy and said she didn't fit because I do believe, I don't think it had to do with her skin color I don't think Karen is that bad to say oh uh-huh. because she's darker than everybody and Karen Wendy, Wendy is the darkest person on that cast yeah um, for sure. I don't think it had anything to do with she didn't think she was pretty. I think it's mm-hmm. because of the fact that of all the young women that came through Potomac, Katie, Ashley, Candace, Monique, all of them came to Karen for molding. Mm-hmm. Wendy did not. She didn't need anything from Karen. She didn't need molding on how to fit in for Potomac. She didn't need molding on how to be a better parent. She's like, I have good role models in my mother and my sister. I don't need you. And because she didn't need Karen, she didn't come to Karen to kiss the ring. And also she actually already knew Karen and she already felt icy. Like she acts like she's never met me before. That was what Wendy said. She acts like she don't even, like she's never met me. And she's like, like we have, we're on the same committee, Karen. I'm like, yeah, that's why she has a problem. It's like every other, cause Wendy is 36. So she fits in that age bracket of younger women who need me to mold them. And it's like, uh, she has four degrees. She has, a, she has a husband that loves her down. She has beautiful children. She has a career. She don't need anything from Karen Huger. And that's not something she can handle. I agree with that take. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's a hot take at all. I mean, Wendy said it even on the TV show, uh, the TV show, the reunion. The <laughs> Hey, I'm old. Um, <laughs> she said it on the television. <laughs> she said it on the TV show, the TV box. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she said it on the reunion, and mm. I agree with that. I think that um, there's probably some intimidation there because mm-hmm. though Karen doesn't have the academic accolades that, mm-hmm. that Wendy has, she has her reputation. She has mm-hmm. um, the grand dumbness of it all. Mm-hmm. And she won't admit it for until she will take it to the grave if she actually feels this way. But I think that Karen was intimidated by her and that the idea of someone overshadowing her in this show mm-hmm. um, with the greatness and that greatness being in Wendy's case, her accomplishments mm-hmm. and her career mm-hmm. and her family and her yeah. husband that will say, I love you out loud. Like there's a lot of things that Wendy got that Karen, Karen doesn't. Didn't. It was like, Karen, you have been a housewife for literally 20 something years. Yeah. It's like, and Karen you've been a has... woman and it's fine. I think that's great. I'm like, I want to see more black women who are like, just wreck, just housewives. You don't have to, labor you don't have to get a job for anything uh-huh. because ladies of leisure has never been a black woman thing we've uh-huh. never been a ladies of leisure ever so it's like 
I actually am like, that's right, Karen. He take go ahead and tell him, pay this bill, pay this credit card bill. I ain't paying this back. You go ahead and pay that credit <laughs> card bill. Give me the credit card. I and he said stipend. I said stipend. I thought that was an interesting. I'm glad he didn't say allowance because I'd have been like. Raymond? Stipend is an interesting choice of Sti- words I was too. Like, people like stipend, like because um, it's also when you say well, it it sounds like what you give to somebody who does like it's what you give a student, like like an intern, like an like an inter, like a student assistant, mm-hmm. or like a yeah, Here's it's your monthly it, stipend, monthly. which indicates a power differentiation. Mm-hmm. But, but, but um, I really am glad he didn't say allowance because I'd have been like, now Raymond. <laughs> he didn't have to say stipend either. Like he could have, she just, he could have just said she had access to all my money. Right. She just said, I took care of you for years. That's all he could have said. And it's like, we would have known because she was literally a stay at home wife. She was a house wife in every form of the, of the word. So I'm like, yeah. And yeah. She lived on the grandiosity mm-hmm. of being the black bill gates's wife and, and being karen huger in potomac and mm-hmm. someone comes in and has their own greatness that they've achieved themselves mm-hmm. and i think that there's probably a ring kissing thing but i think there's also an intimidation thing that yeah. karen does not want to be outshined and i think that that's one of the reasons she is always always bringing Giselle up and always like um, Giselle said something about her and Ray and then in her confessional Karen was like I know when she's bringing up my man that she's not right at home and like there's some element of truth to that like things aren't right with Jamal but I think that like that one of the reasons she keeps uh, I don't want to use the word obsessed but like she is she doesn't want to let the mouse go when it comes to Giselle. And it's, mm. I don't think Giselle even thinks they're in the same universe in terms of comp- like comparison. Yeah. And that probably pisses Karen off too. Like, cause she wants, like she is a self-proclaimed grand dame. Mm-hmm. And the grand dame <laughs> of Potomac really is Sharice Jackson Jordan, but we're not going to do that today. Um, it was like, man. Karen Huger, please, if you're listening. <laughs> We still love you and your wigs. We really do. Over your nose, over your nose. The mother freaking mask goes over your nose. Put it on your mouth and it ain't doing nothing. Put it on your nose or the germs still coming. Hey, over your nose, over your nose. The mother freaking mask goes over your nose. It's a pandemic and we stuck inside. Put it on your nose or some people gon' die. Hey, over your nose, over your nose. The mother freaking mask goes over your nose, over your nose. Over your nose, mother freaking mask goes over your nose.